way to start as far as uh, tree pruning um, is to try and figure out what your goals are. So as, as we kind of talked, you know, you, you were looking at um, having a kind of a tree screen hedge or whatnot, and that's fine if that's what you're working with. Um, so understanding what your goals are, understanding what the plant material that you're working with, um, this being a fruit tree, this is not going to get, you know, 60 feet tall and be a nice shade tree that's going to provide canopy for, uh, for us in the, in the summertime. Um, so there's different pruning requirements uh, given the plant material. And then um, really what your site conditions allow. And so kind of all that gets molded into um, how or the proper way to prune uh, what tree that you have. So um, my first recommendation is that if you have to get off the ground to prune a tree, I recommend contacting a professional arborist, a certified arborist, uh, through the International Society of Arbor Arboriculture. Um, there's just too many safety factors that go into play when there's uh, aerial pruning or getting off the ground to do any pruning. Um, there's a lot of stored up potential energy uh, within trees once they get to adolescent and mature uh, size. And there's a lot of safety issues for yourself, others, and then also for the tree, what's, what's proper. Um, so that being said, we're gonna focus on kind of smaller trees today and what to do essentially after they've just been planted or even before planting. So this will be um, focusing on small trees, uh, really structure pruning is what, what we call it. And it's, uh, it's trying to get a nice central leader for the tree, trying to get nice branching, and then promote, promote that long-term growth. But the, uh, the one thing that people don't often think about is what to do before planting. So um, we're actually gonna look at root pruning. So if you are going to install any new trees, so as you can see, this tree has been container grown um, by the um, nursery folks. And so you can see all these uh, fibrous roots that are just kind of basically hitting the walls of this container and then just wrapping around. And if you start to really dig in here, then you can see some of these more adventitious roots that we have um, just below the top layer of all this soil and whatnot. Um, so even if you get, you know, a larger, larger diameter tree, like a bald and burlap tree that, you know, is two inch or larger in diameter, it's really important to get in here and break up these roots and get rid of some of this material for two reasons. One, because <clears throat> it helps agitate those roots. It helps get them broken apart so they don't bind around themselves. Um, oftentimes, I've seen this before in the field where people will plant a tree right out of, of its container or, or not go through this process and it'll grow fine for 20 years and then all of a sudden it'll just die for whatever reason. And you pull it out and you see that the roots are all just bound up. And so essentially what happens is the tree chokes itself out. So getting in there and actually breaking all this material up and trying to find that first adventitious root is what you want to do. And usually what I do, I come in with, with my skill saw <laughs> and I will just cut squares off of it and cut a square off the bottom and then take uh, my handheld garden rake and just rake out the roots. I mean, I pretty much get um, aggressive with, uh, with getting the roots broken up. So if you, if, if you garden or if you have house plants, you know, it's kind of the same principle. You want to get in there and break those roots up before you put that plant material in the pots or in the ground. So really what you're looking for is that first, that first major root system coming off and then you want to see if there's any ones that are wrapping around and binding around itself. And you want to get those, you want to get those out. You either want to cut them out with a pair of hand pruners, or if they're large enough, you may have to use the, the saw. Um, and that's really the first step 
uh, in pruning is, is getting the root system because as I said before, otherwise this, this will um, help, the, help the tree get its roots spread out. Trees, uh, roots need oxygen and that's one of the most important things. When they're bound up like this in the containers, um, they just, they, they have a hard time getting oxygen and then um, just growing vigorously. So getting in there and really breaking all this up And then again, cutting out any roots that you see that may be twisting around itself like this. If you often walk downtown, there's a great example um, just down the street um, at Lynn in Washington where the roots are, are above the surface and they're kind of spread all over the place and they're kind of, they kind of bound around themselves. So that's what you want to avoid having happen. So you get in there and you cut those up and and break those up. And doing this is definitely gonna stress the tree out. Pruning, you are wounding a tree. A tree does not heal. So don't ever say that a tree heals. That's, that's a misconception. A tree does not heal. It has the capability of walling off or compartmentalizing decay. So whenever you prune a tree, you are introducing oxygen into the inner cell walls of the tree. And so that oxygen mixing with the cell walls, that produces decay. And that decay will spread into the tree. That's why we have um, cavities or wounds in, in larger mature trees. And so that decay will spread and the tree's defense mechanism is to basically close that off as fast as it can. So um, a tree can never heal itself. It can only wall off decay. And this principle was developed by Dr. Alex Shago back in the 70s and it's called compartmentalization of decay in tree or coat it. Um, so that's why proper pruning is, is essential because the tree has the ability to do that naturally and, and we don't want to inhibit that by um, improper pruning. So as you can see here on this little apple tree we have a number of branches that have been pruned off and so the tree is already starting to put on wound wood or um, start that, that compartmentalization process. And so it's starting, starting to and trying to close over those wounds. And so it's really important, and I'll show you on some of the larger trees because it's uh, easier to see, but it's really important to, uh, to make proper pruning cuts um, so the tree can uh, grow over that and then also um, so it doesn't leave that wound open. Um, so if you can see kind of those areas right here, so that, that kind of reddish um, material right there, that is, uh, that's the wound wood, the, the tree closing over. And so this area right here is the branch collar, um, just, just uh, basically where that wound wood is starting to form. And then um, this is the branch bark, bark ridge, this little kind of, um, uh, raised section where the stem meets the parent stem or the trunk and so there's a there's a certain area on the on the limb where you want to cut you don't want to cut too deep into this into this branch uh, branch collar or into the branch bark ridge because then you're basically cutting away those cell layers for it to be able to compartmentalize and close off so oftentimes I say that it's it's better to not cut enough, you know, leave a little bit of a, of a stub than to cut too deep because at least then you can start to see that process happening and then you can come back and make your adjustments later. Um, so, so on some of the larger trees, so we have really two, two good examples of uh, the coated process or the compartmentalization of decay. Um, so right here you can see this is the wound wood that's starting to uh, starting to form over where that where that cut was made. There's still a little bit of an opening. There is decay in there. If we cut this open, if we put it under a microscope, you will see decay in there, but it's starting to wall that off and stop that decay process. So um, trees are, you know, very similar with, you know, compared to like our teeth. Um, you know, you get decay in your teeth. Really the only thing that you can do is take it out, cap it off and stop that decay. Um, trees are the same way. So you can see right here, this is pretty much fully closed over and formed over. Um, so the, the tree has compartmentalized that, it's closed it off, 
um, and so it's doing a good job of that. So if you come in here, this is the branch bark ridge. This is where the, the lateral stem meets the parent stem or the trunk. And then this little line right here where you can kind of see that the, it's, it's smooth and then there's a little bit of a bulge just right here on this line, that's the branch collar. And that's essentially where you want to make your cut, where you want to make your first cut and where you want to um, take off that branch. You go too far, like I said, that'll get into the cell layers that um, help with the, um, with the walling off. <clears throat> so um, let's cut a little branch. Basically find that, even on this small branch, find that branch collar, find that branch bark ridge, and just come back from that branch bark ridge towards the limb side just a little bit and make our cut. So we still have just a little bit of material here. We can see the branch uh, bark ridge much more pronounced now. And so that should start to uh, close over and wall off um, in time. So um, the other thing with pruning is, as I said, what are your goals? If you wanna have a nice straight conical tree, um, if you want to prune for fruit production, uh, you'll be doing a different pruning uh, tactics. Um, for the shade, shade tree, what you would like to have in your front yard, um, I would say that would be more of a um, conical, um, conical type of pruning. And so really what you want to do from an early age with a, with a, a new tree that you're going to plant or a young tree that you have is you want to start establishing a dominant lead or a dominant stem in the tree. So you want to have one stem, one leader in the tree that's going to basically grow up. Everything else is going to branch out from that. They're kind of out competing each other for who's going to have dominance, who's going to be the main structural lead for the tree. And so you still get this conical shape, but what happens is <clears throat> this branch structure in here this is not as structurally sound as just having one central leader. Essentially what's happening is that that bark is starting to grow together as the, as the tree starts to put on cell layers because the tree is essentially one big cone and all the cell layers just get put on year after year. And so that's why you see <coughs> uh, changes in bark and, and the tree starts to put those cell layers on through the bark system. And so essentially what happens is that process starts to starts to form its own wound and so the tree can't heal it because it's right at that branch bark ridge it's right at that contact point and so what happens over time <clears throat> is that 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 becomes structurally unsound and if there's any kind of wind loads or snow loads or or college kids walking by <laughs> um, that can get torn out very easily and break off and then essentially what you'll have is a big tear in the tree the tree will have a bit basically greater mass of surface area to try and wall that off and close that off and so you really want to try and get something like this right here where it has one straight upright lead it has one dominant stem and it'll be more structurally sound so it's really hard to try and think about and do, especially on a younger tree. Um, but it's really easy to do because it's smaller, it's at ground level, and small trees um, react better to pruning. They, it, you know, it, very much like children and adolescents, you know, they, they bounce back quickly. They heal, <laughs> they heal quickly and easier than, than the more mature trees. So we'll go back to our apple here real quick. So as you can see here, what we have going on is we have these two stems, these two leaders that are essentially the same height. They're trying to compete. They want to they wanna be at the same level. Um, and so we need to choose one of these to get rid of so the tree will be more structurally sound. So looking at this, which one which one do you think looks better to keep and which one do you think looks better to take away as far as if you were going to want to have one that's right in the middle, right centrally upright and, and better to have? Probably the taller 
It's a little tricky. It's a little art, a little science, a little luck, <laughs> um, little guess, uh, too. So you're saying the one on the left-hand side? I or? think so, but it yeah. has a scar in it anyway. So That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. So we already have we already have some wounding occurring here because someone probably in the nursery when it was growing already took one of the leads out uh, for whatever reason, and so we do have some uh, some wound wood right there that's starting to form. So yes, I would agree. I would say you know taking this one out may be the better option because now we have a new point that has potentially a better area to close over but at this point it's kind of a it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a guessing game like I said a little bit of art a little bit of science a little bit of luck so um, <clears throat> don't be afraid with these smaller trees don't be afraid to get in there and you know really change the shape of them um, the rule of thumb for pruning for pruning trees is really it's it's kind of been uh, in the industry standard um, it's been one third of the canopy, so the overall mass canopy of the of the tree. That's they say you shouldn't take more than that at one time because it may overstress the tree. I can tell you that the pruning standards. Some of the research that's coming out of Florida uh, with Dr. Ed Gilman and um, some of the uh, hurricane research that he's been doing with respect to trees is that you can actually start to take more than that, and it's 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 almost becoming recommended. Um, and so really with this, with this tree, we would look at probably taking out this one, trying to slow this guy down because once I took out this one, he's gonna get more energy to him. He's gonna start to want to be the next dominant. And so we kind of do one of those. And then over time, what we'll do is probably, more than likely, this branch will go away. This will be our temporary branch for right now. Because we still want, like I said, a tree is basically a, a, a big cone. And so it, it pulls up nutrients and waters and sugars from the ground. It, it pushes it down from the leaves, from the sun, and all the photosynthetic material. And so it's transporting all that energy and so we want that energy to still get transported, especially to these wound spots that we just created because all those starches and sugars are gonna help, um, help the tree put on that wound wood that much faster. And so um, hence the reason there's a percentage that you do at one time. Um, so best time to prune a tree. It does depend on the tree. That's a great answer. Um, there are a lot of factors that affect the tree, different trees. So for instance, um, oaks um, have the potential to get oak wilt, oak blight, um, and now we have a new pest and disease coming in, potentially coming in the area, uh, gypsy moth. And so um, we have to be cognizant and thoughtful of when to prune those. And the recommendation is <coughs> Um, don't prune oaks after March 15th and you can start to prune them again basically after September 15th. So I always say if you remember Shakespeare, be, beware the Ides of March, March 15th, <laughs> stop pruning your oaks. So, um, so oaks are one. Um, obviously we have emerald ash borer around here. I, Again, I wouldn't recommend pruning those uh, anytime outside of the winter months. But as far as any other tree goes, um, really uh, the best time is, is right before the buds break on the tree. So um, just a little bit earlier than where we are now uh, in the season, but just before the buds break, um, probably date-wise I'd say March into early, early April. Um, is really the best time because that's when the tree is pushing the most sugars, pushing the most moisture, pushing the most nutrients. And so those, those cell layers can start to form and start to close, close up that wound that much faster. Um, another one uh, that you, you really want to be careful of pruning outside of, uh, of the winter time are crab apples and apples. Um, they can get, they can get uh, um, fire blight, uh, it's a bacterial disease, 
but um, if, if you don't have any of that showing up in, in your yard, then, then you should be okay, but recommendation is to only prune those in the, in the winter months as well. So, um, <clears throat> any questions thus far? You just said that there's a different way to prune trees depending on they're for shade or like for fruit. Um, like, how would you prune a fruit tree? Well, typically, uh, fruit trees, um, you're, you're going for production. So uh, you, you, you don't necessarily want to um, have that uh, conical shape or that height. You're not looking for height, essentially. You're not looking for, um, for that shade. So really, um, fruit trees are pretty forgiving as far as pruning. Um, and they compartmentalize really quickly, so they close off that wound really quickly. <clears throat> um, so really what you would like to do is, um, it, again, what are your goals? Do you want to keep it low enough, small enough that you don't have to climb a ladder every time you want, <laughs> want to pick an apple? Um, <clears throat> exactly, so essentially same principle as before, but now you're, now you're looking at the buds. So, or where, where it's starting to butt out. So instead of cutting whole branches off at the branch bark ridge, you really wanna be looking at where the buds are coming off of and then snip just in front of the buds. So you still have this, this leaf material, the tree's still gonna put on um, uh, photosynthetic process and, and photosynthetic material, but it's gonna, it's gonna basically stun or retard the growth of that, that particular branch. So you never want to cut a branch just midway like this because that will never, never heal over. This will be your edge that will always be there. It will never, and again, I'm sorry, not heal over, close over. Uh, it will never close over. Um, it will never compartmentalize. And so you always want to bring it back just before the bud and leave it there. And typically what I like to do with um, pruning small trees like this, if you want to try and keep their shape confined or down, I typically try and see how the branch is oriented and the bud that I want to leave or cut it back to, I usually try and leave one that's on the top side. Aesthetically, it just kind of looks better and overall, if, you know, that's what the natural form of the tree is trying to do anyways. So. And then again, you know, what are your goals as far as mowing in your yard or, you know, not wanting to get hit in the face every time you walk by your tree? Um, raising the tree, raising the branches is a good idea as well. What I like to say is that everything that we do as far as pruning with a tree is trying to mimic or imitate what naturally occurs in a forest stand. So, um, you know, when you think of Upper City Park in the in the Oak Grove that we have there, you know, there's there's hardly any lower canopy, and that's that's due to us pruning it, but it's also due to the natural process of the forest, where the light isn't getting down to those lower branches and allowing those branches to grow, they die out, and then the upper canopy is really what we see. So, so pruning up these branches, um, if that is what your goal is, is is a good idea and okay. Um, a common misconception is that that folks think that this branch right here is going to grow up higher with the tree. It will not. It will always stay at this level on the tree. The tree will put on mass, but this branch will stay at this level too. As you can see with um, <clears throat> our ash tree right here, this branch, this large, almost eight inch diameter branch or more that's coming off of here, that branch was left and it stayed there there was probably the thought that that was gonna, you know, go up higher with the level. It did not, it stayed at that level. Um, and, and, it, and it grew larger. It's also trying to compete with the inner crown and the central lead of the rest of the tree. And so um, structurally long-term, that probably should have been removed. Um, and the best time to do it is when it's young. So the best thing that you can do for your tree is, is prune it when it's young. Planting a tree and walking away from it is about the worst thing you can do. So it's all, it always takes constant care and maintenance, just like children, training, <laughs> training it and teaching it what 
<clears throat> what to do and how to be the best, best tree that it can be. Any other questions? So raising, finding a central leader, a dominant stem, uh, and then understanding what your goals are and taking out some of those, some of those competing branches. That's really, I would say that the, for, for younger structural pruning, that's, that's the, the main focus. Um, and don't be afraid to get aggressive with the roots. Absolutely, before you plant a tree, I would recommend doing that. Um, Nope, that's a great question. So that's back to one of my first points is knowing your plant material and you need to know the goals of the, what the plant wants to do and how the plant wants to grow. So a weeping variety, it's really kind of, however, wanted to <clears throat> however you want it to weep, however you want it to, uh, to grow. And really with those varieties, they get so dense and so clustered um, that they start to shade out the inner uh, uh, canopy. And so really most of the time what you're doing is just maintenance upkeep as far as removing dead material. So um, the pruning standards that we had discussed before as far as the branch collar and the branch bark ridge, that still applies to dead wood too. Um, uh, if, you cut, if you cut too far back into that, into, that, um, into that branch collar and that branch bark ridge, you'll still have the same detrimental effect as far as cutting out those cell layers. Uh, even though there's a dead branch there. Um, behind that, there's still live material that's trying to close that off. And oftentimes you'll see uh, the tree's been trying to do that for years if, it, if, the, if the dead branch hasn't been removed. So um, deadwood pruning is, is an excellent thing to do uh, on, on some of your more mature, uh, adolescent and mature trees. Um, but again, I'd recommend contacting a professional. Excuse me, when we're removing a branch um, by sawing it, um, that's a little bit larger in diameter that, than what your pruners can handle. You really want to be cognizant, again, of that branch ridge, that uh, branch collar. And so what you absolutely don't want to have happen, which we refer to as tearing. And so <clears throat> essentially, if you just cut on the top side of the branch, the holding wood of the branch is on the top, uh, the main holding wood of the branch is on the top side of the branch. So I'm going to come down here. So what happens is that wood starts to tear and starts to peel. And so if you do that back here, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to tear into that branch collar and that branch bark ridge. And then you're going to, you're going to tear away those cell layers that we talked about that we're trying to save. And so oftentimes you'll see if someone has just cut from the top, it tears out because the weight's too great or the pressure is too great and it'll tear that out and you'll see the closure on top, but you won't see that closure below. And so what we really recommend, what you should do <coughs> is a three cut method. So you start by cutting in on the bottom and then cut on the top, just back from it. And so what you'll ha see happen is that by the weight of the branch, it'll start to close down onto this cut. And these two points on either side of, of your cut, <clears throat> that's your holding wood, that's your kerf. That's if you're felling a tree, this is the area that you want to have intact. Otherwise, bad things can happen. <laughs> it can move a different way than what you expected. So you really want to, do that first cut, come back behind it, cut a little bit more, and what'll happen is that'll break off. And so you can see where these, these fibers or these uh, cell layers have, start, have started to pull away. And so by doing, by doing the three cut method, you, you don't get that tear. It breaks off right there, so it doesn't have the chance to tear down and, and disrupt those cell layers that you're trying to protect. And then the third step in it in the process is making your final cut to where the branch attaches. And again, being cognizant of the branch bark ridge and being cognizant of the branch collar so you don't cut into it. And this is a good example where 
having three different branches come out of one branch union is, is not ideal. It's not something that you want. Um, that's the other thing that I would stress too, is whenever you're referring to, um, referring to a tree or referring to the parts of a tree, don't ever use the word crotch. It's just, it sounds derogatory anyways, and it's just, it's, um, branch union is the preferred term. So, um, and then we'll take this whole thing back all the way, pretty much back to here. So again, we have this three stem that's coming out that's not really ideal. That's, those stems are gonna be competing. It's not a good union. Um, really, the best, the best branch union or shape of a branch union is kind of a U shape, kind of like this. If you get three of these or more, it's not really that great of a, uh, of a branch union. There's too much, too much going on in there, too much, too much pressure, too much weight. And then if you have a branch union that is more like a V, um, like, we, like we saw kind of on that example, um, that's where you get that included bark happening. That's where you get that, um, that competition and then the potential for decay to start in a, in a weak uh, branch union, weak structure. Mm -hmm.